go. All right, everyone. What is up? My name is Stephen Michaels from the Raiders Daily. I am host. I am with Philip Robinson from the Unfiltered Truth. So, Phil, what's up? How's it going? And let's get this thing going. It is good. It's always a pleasure to come out and talk Raiders with friends and talk Raiders just period. And ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you all to the fastest Raiders show online. The show where we take five questions and we give two sentence answers and we just tell you exactly what we think. Get in, get out, cut and dry, and let it leave the rest up to you. Question number one on the table is should the Raiders trade for Russell Wilson? Okay, I'll take this one. I'm going to say no. The reason why is, first of all, you would have to give up way too much to get Russell Wilson in a trade. I mean, think about it. They would have to throw away, what, two number one picks. Uh, and second of all, it's not happening because Derek Carr is going to be the quarterback. What do you think, Phil? Uh, sadly, I agree that Derek Carr is going to be the quarterback. John Gruden has no inclination in changing his signal caller. He, he's rocking with Derek, and currently that's, the, uh, that's the, the guy he's married to. And they need too much help on defense to commit that type of cap, uh, that type of draft capital to Seattle in order to do it. I, I love the idea of Russell Wilson being a Raider. I don't like what it's going to cost to get him. And also, just real quick, uh, Russell Wilson saying that it's just pulling at the heartstrings of Raider fans. That's all it is. They're just using the Raiders as – you know, buzz to get people excited on Twitter. That's why we're talking about it. All right, let's go right to question number two. Question number two, what is the real problem with the Raiders? Oh boy. Well, the real problem with the Raiders, I think starts honestly from upper management, you know, the ownership down. Uh, you know, you sign John Gruden to a 10 year contract. This guy has yet to have a winning season. Uh, then you don't get better. I mean, the Raiders have not gotten any better. They, in 2016, I know they went to the playoffs, but go back and look at that season. A lot of that was going forward on fourth downs and things like that. They were never going to the Super Bowl that season. This team has major problems, not only on defense, but they have problems on offense. They have problems everywhere. So I don't know, Phil, what do you think? What's, what, what's your take on this? Um, at this particular point, it, it all leads all all roads lean back to John Gruden. Said he was entrusted with the franchise. He's given he's been given everything he could possibly need. He's held on to a bad DC for too long. His handpicked GM is not is not bringing in guys who can get it done for him, and the players are not being held accountable. And as much as I'd like to say it's the def, as much as some would say it's the defense, as much as some would say it's the offense, it all comes back to the guy who's running the show. And quite frankly, the effort that he's putting forward is not enough to win in this league. And not to mention, I mean, Mark Davis said this is a big effing deal when he hired John Gruden at a broadcast booth. And listen, I like John Gruden. I think he's animated. I think he's fun to watch on the sidelines. I like when he yells at the quarterbacks and things like that. But it has to, at some point, produce wins. This team has to win. And, you know, Mark Davis lets John Gruden just hire his friends. And I think that is a big, big problem. We've seen that with Paul Gunther. Rod Marinelli is still there. I mean, the guy's 100 years old, and he's still there. So I just think, you know, it's it, John Gruden, you're correct, Phil. That is pretty much the problem, I believe, as well. Okay, question number three. Question number three, keep or release Jalen Richard. I am going to say it's time to cut ties with Jalen Richard. He didn't do much last season. He didn't really do much the season before. I don't know exactly what his role is. Now, the only reason why I would, you know, I'm kind of on the fence on this is because, you know, he's been in the system, just like Derek Carr. He's been in Gruden's system. So he knows, you know, all the plays. He knows all the verbiage and all those type of things. So he could be used, you know, for a third back, but he definitely should not be the second running back on a depth chart. Uh, in my opinion, it's time for him to leave as well. I would, the, me personally, I'm of the belief that if you get rid of all of the Raiders' backups, you can put a package or you can put that money together and make a run at Le'Veon Bell, who would be a perfect backup and a perfect running back, p 
patient running back to run behind this Raiders offensive line. I think that the, what you were getting with Richard is a pass catching back who could who was outstanding in pass protection, which is both two things that Le'Veon Bell excels at. And not only that, he's a fantastic runner. And the fact that he's willing, he's now willing to be in a committee versus being the guy that's going out there and getting the ball 80% of the plays and being the second best wide receiver on his team, that that would make a ton of sense, especially with the lack of usage of the wide receivers in the passing game. I just don't know if Le'Veon Bell's the answer. I, I think the Raiders probably should draft a running back. Le'Veon Bell has been around for a while. And you know what happens with these running backs when they get older. I, I thought Booker, Demonte Booker, had a pretty good season last year. I think he deserved a lot more snaps, and he didn't get them. But I think he did a pretty damn good job. And I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with that, you know, why his snaps are so limited. But every time Jacobs went out and he came in, he made some pretty good plays. He really did in the passing game and the run game. I mean, he showed flashes of being pretty good. If I was the Raiders, I would try to sign that guy back for a cheap, cheap price and keep him as a third running back and go out and find a second running back. If that's a, a veteran, like you said, like Bell, then so be it. But they need another running back on that team. They, they need someone that has some power, too. Because when you have Jacobs and Booker, it, it's – I mean, uh, sorry, uh, Richard and Booker, it's almost like the same kind of back. You need a power back, I believe. You know what I mean? Someone who can do something – similar to Jacobs but at the same time you know do a little bit more as well but not two scat backs I don't think that's the way to go I really don't so next question what no, we got I'll touch on that real quick and I, I actually okay. agree they do need a they do need a power back and I did and I did like what Booker did and, and as why he didn't get as many snaps as he did you know guys fight for carries but I was I liked what I saw from him as well at one point I think he was averaging over five yards a carry when he came in and just wasn't getting enough opportunities with the football. He seemed to have solved his fumbling issues, which was what plagued him over in Denver. And I like the fact that he was faster than Josh Jacobs, because a lot of what we get, what we overlook is the fact that Josh Jacobs is basically running a four seven. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, I like my running backs to be slightly faster than that, but that's just me personally. And I have enjoyed the, the effort and production that Jacobs has put out. So it hasn't particularly limited to him. It just, he just can't score from outside of 40 yards. He's not a home run hitter. Yeah. But we also got to remember too, Jacobs was injured pretty much the entire season last year. So that hopefully that's the reason why he had a little, his production went a little bit down. Uh, I believe he only had, what, a couple hundred yard games. Uh, we need a lot more out of Josh Jacobs going forward. And I expect a lot more out of this guy because I think he can be pretty good. I mean, his rookie year, that guy was a beast. You know what I mean? So let's hope Josh Jacobs can get back the form of his rookie year in 2021. And I hope that he does. And I love Josh Jacobs. Don't let me try to convince you that I don't. But his, he's had injuries early on in both seasons he's played in. And it's and he's had to play through the season with them, uh, which gives me some concerns about his durability. But we're going to move on because we could talk about Josh Jacobs all day. Question number four. What are plans for Las Vegas? Okay, this is a, okay, this is a weird question. All right. So, uh, we could take this any way we want, but what I don't understand, right? I'm going to talk about the business side of Las Vegas. The Raiders go to Las Vegas. Mark Davis chooses not to have any fans in the stands when he could have had some, you know, some teams had some fans. Um, he chooses none at all. And, you know, they get to Las Vegas at this beautiful new stadium. And I don't know, man, I just think all the business stuff they did since going to Vegas really hasn't worked. I mean, let's be honest here. Uh, they're on an AM radio station. That's their flagship station on AM radio. And no, nobody listens to AM radio. I'm sorry. That's the truth. No one listens to it. And um, it's just weird. You know, they have this great stadium. Plus their prices are going to be so outrageous. They're going to outprice the fans that used to come from Oakland. I just don't. I don't get it, to be honest. I mean, I hope it all works out, but I also hope next year, look, hopefully everything's normal. The, the, stand, the fans in the stands aren't the uh, opposing fans. 
You know what I mean? That's, that's the only thing that worries me. I think the Raiders could have done a better job with media, with all of that. They're in Las Vegas. You know what I mean? They are in Las Vegas. I think they could have promoted themselves way better. So what do you think about it? Uh, I would have to agree. Now, to go in the business aspect of this is a little different than what I'm used to doing, but I got I have opinions on that too. Moving into a new market, the Raiders are a glorified expansion team. Yes, the franchise has been around forever, but you're talking about a new state, new government, new home, new, new market. The, they're not even in the Bay Area market anymore. Had, towards the last couple of games of the season, I had to go and stream the games because I could no longer watch them on TV. Vegas is a town that you have to win in. They, they're, they cannot come into Vegas. They've come in and they put up an eight and eight record off of a six and three start. That, that can't continue to happen. Otherwise, the interest is not going to be there. Yes, it will be a destination stadium, a destination place, and people will go there for a couple of years because it's brand new, but the price factor is out of this world. It, it's something that even if I wanted to go to without a media credential, I just can't because I just can't afford to get in the damn stadium. You're going to see me doing shows from parking lots and all kinds of other stuff, but regardless of that fact, they they have i'll to be there be, with you they, hey, that'll be a good time you should come on there you guys should come i'm on throwing a, hang on a minute i'm throwing away my media credentials i don't want to be media anymore i don't want to do any of that anymore i'm <laughs> i'm the man of the people uh, i'm i'm done with it all and uh yeah so i'll be in that parking lot with you there it is giving all of you some unfiltered truth from the parking lot letting you know what you really need to know because the, the, what, what they're doing is they're bringing the old Oakland baggage to Las Vegas. And, and in order to truly be successful, they need to leave that behind and figure out how to advertise, how to generate revenue better. It looks like Mark Davis purchased the Aces so that he could play them in his stadium. So maybe they can continue to build up capital so that the issues that they face during free agency will not always be not having enough cash to compete with other teams, which I truly think is hurting them in their, in their selection of free agents because they're just being used as a number to drive up other teams' prices rather than bringing everybody in and being able to seal the deal because you've got guys on pay-as-you pay as go deals and one-year prove it. Guy, the right guys have got to get paid and you got to stop overpaying second-tier guys. That's the only way they're going to get better and the only way they're going to start winning. Question. I also, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. I, I don't want to sound like a jerk or anything, but isn't the Las Vegas Aces uh, WNBA? Yes, it is. How many people go to WNBA games? So regardless of how many people actually go to WNBA games, you're looking at a stadium that is currently empty. The WNBA could be playing in it right now, and that stadium would have bodies in it, which would mean it's generating revenue. I just never, I mean, I've honestly never seen WNBA even on TV. And you're right about the whole, uh, the, you know, the TV business. Everyone in Oakland, everyone in the Bay Area, I should say, should be able to watch the Las Vegas Raiders on their local channel. That is ridiculous that you cannot do that. I mean, this team was in Oakland for so long, and now what? There's just a, it's just dumb. That's just, just stupid. Okay, let's move on to another question. Just a memory. Question number five, should Mike Mayock be on the hot seat? Yes, yes. Finally, the question we all been waiting for. Listen, uh, okay, how can I say this without being uh, a complete asshole here? Okay, so Mike Mayock's draft picks, okay? His first year, Josh Jacobs, great. You know what I mean? Uh, Jonathan Abram, let's wait and see. Um, that whole draft class, Max Crosby, you know, you know I like Max Crosby, obviously. So, you know, but he was a fourth round pick. The Raiders didn't know he was going to turn out to be Max Crosby. You know what? You know, he should have been rookie of the year for crying out loud. But and they got Hunter Renfro, which is, I think, a really good pickup. But then it's like, I mean, what was last year? What did they do? I mean, these guys, they got all these defensive backs, right? They got Mullins, Robertson, all these guys that are just not very good. You know, and then when you – I know he doesn't have a ton of say in free agency, but he still does. I mean, their free agency class has been atrocious. Last season, all – I mean, Carl Nassib 
is the worst defensive end in football. The guy couldn't even get active for some games. And then, like I said, if you go back to the draft picks, I mean, there's a lot of misses there. There's a lot of misses. Hopefully, and you know, in a couple of years, they step it up and you know they prove me wrong. But I don't think Tanner Muse is ever going to be a pro bowler. I'm sorry, I just don't think that's ever going to happen. Well, what do you think? Uh, I'm in the same camp with you with Muse. I don't, I don't even think he he's going to play <clears throat> and get on a get on the practice squad this year. But the drafting, the we all expected Mike Mayock to come in and hit home run after home run through the draft because that was supposed to be his thing. That's what we've seen him do on NFL Network. That's what we followed. We've seen him down at the Senior Bowl. Everything that was related to the draft ran through Mike Mayock. And when he finally got the opportunity to start making these selections for real, to start being the guy to be the general manager and pull the strings on all the player personnel, all the scouting, what we bit, what we've we've been disappointed. These guys, we're in a position where the team needs to get better at virtually every position that he's drafted. We have we're over the cap, and we only and we're picking in the middle of the draft. And it's look, the more and more that you look at it, the more and the more it looks like it's just not going to work. It's not working out. And then in the middle of the season, when you when he really needs to be working his magic to find a way to be able to bring in a guy who can make a difference, bring in a street free agent or make a trade, there's been nothing. There's been nothing that could help them get over the hump. They've been six and three, two years in a row and collapsed. And in the middle of that collapse, they have done nothing, brought in no big names, brought in no, you look at Tampa Bay with the main guys that they won the Super Bowl with, no, uh, none of them were on the roster when the season started. Exactly, exactly. And I mean, think about it this way. How many years have Raider fans been saying the Raiders should draft a linebacker, you know, someone, you know, in the first round, you know, something like that. Mayock doesn't do that. You know what I mean? Like he just, he has so many draft picks from that Cleo Mack trade. And it's just, you know, people can say, well, no, this guy's awesome. This guy's awesome. Well, guess what? The Raiders were eight and eight and they missed the playoffs again. So how awesome can these players be if this team's not winning football games? And most of these guys that are drafted are inactive for these games because the coaches just don't think they're good enough. Trayvon Mullen struggles, Robertson struggles. All of these guys have these struggles. Jonathan Abram, let's Kelsey get us game winning touchdown. We, if you follow the assignment, probably could have picked the pass off. But I mean, the guy's too aggressive uh, with his tackling because he, does, he doesn't tackle, he shoulder tackles. He doesn't wrap his arms around guys. Now, I think Jonathan Abram will get better. I do think, you know, Gus Bradley's going to make him better. And like I said, I do like Hunter Renfro and I do like Josh Jacobs and I like Max Crosby, obviously. But that's like, you know, four guys out of the last two draft classes. So, Mike Mayock just hasn't lived up to the hype, and he's supposed to be the draft guru. So, I mean, he better nail it this draft. And if he doesn't, trade those picks for all-star players that are already good, not like a Carl Nassib, not like, you know, anyone like that. Go get someone who's good. Don't get an Arden Key, because guess what? This guy's not working out either. That guy's just, I mean, he's a letdown every single year. So, I mean, the Raiders need – pass rush. I know they used to have Cleo Mack, but they needed to, they couldn't pay him. They couldn't afford him. So we got to get over that. They did get guys or, you know, you know, they got Hunter Renfro. They got Jacobs. They got Abram. They got, you know, these young guys in place that probably can be good. So if they turn out to be good, then they totally win that Cleo Mack trade. I think they win it regardless because well, look at the Texans. They had JJ Watt. How many Super Bowl ch championships did they win? Zero. You don't win a championship with just one good defensive end. You need a collective of a lot of good players. So by if the Raiders would have paid Cleo Mack all that money, I don't think the Raiders would have ever got out of it. I think they would have been even worse than they are now. So Mike Mayock, he has to do better this year. Let's hope he does better this year. He's a good guy. I want him to keep his job. And this is this this is his year, I think. I think he's on the hot seat. Let me give you some unfiltered truth about Mike Mayock. 
We ran Reggie McKenzie out of town, called his draft picks garbage, said he didn't know what he was doing, this, that, and a third. In his third year on the job, he was named the executive of the year, and the Raiders were in the playoffs. And that, quite frankly, is the standard that we need to hold Mike Mayock to. If the Raiders do not make the playoffs this year, in his third year on the job, then we're going to need to look to do something different. Because with five first-round draft picks, with all the draft capital he's had to work with, the new stadium, the all of the stuff that he was supposed to have at his disposal to make it work. A guy ran off AB who just won the Super Bowl. Uh, there, there are too many misses coming from Mike Mayock in order for him to be able to keep his job. And if he can't turn it around and give Gruden better pick, better players to make it work with, then they need to get rid of him. And that's really all that it is to it. Okay, before we wrap this up, though, I got to defend Mayock with the AB thing. And that guy was insane, Bill. He put a trash bear on his head and ran around the, the, the stadium I mean, or the training place. Uh, uh, I mean, come on. The guy was nuts. He Bruce Arians made feet. it work. He, yeah, because they had him out for, you know, they just put him out in a practice field, uh, or in the game. Who I guarantee you that dude's not going to last there that long. That guy's nuts. He's crazy. Not to mention, it, doesn't he have pending charges against them or something for rape or something? shenanigans oh, i don't know I, I think antonio brown went in there maybe the guy was mentally ill then maybe he's on meds now and he's okay i don't know but i can't blame mayoff for that full debacle now it would have been great to have antonio brown because the guy in my opinion is once a be- one of the best wide receivers in the national football league but you know it is what it is and this guy remember he went after mike mayoff you know what i mean so that's the way it is but that's it for our show here. Uh, we do this on the Raiders Daily Elite, our subscription group on Facebook. It's the greatest group in the world. Trust me, you guys have no idea what you're missing on there. Uh, Phil, why don't you promote all your stuff that you got going on? And to later on this evening at 5 p.m. P. Pacific Standard Time, you'll get to watch me and my partner, Phil Jones, on the Unfiltered Truth podcast as we break down in detail everything Raiders, we'll go over uh, some of the topics that we covered just now and a, little, and a look to the future at how exactly are the Raiders going to get better and fix these personnel issues that they have and maybe just maybe even get some of the other issues lined up. So look for that on Facebook Live. Look for that on our YouTube channel, The Unfiltered Truth. We got shirts, we got merchandise, and I actually picked up a little leather football helmet from way back that I'll be showing off in the show. All right. So, yeah, everyone, please listen to their show, support their show. It's a really good show. I don't listen to a lot of Raider podcasts, but I listen to their show. You know why? Because they know football. And I promise you, I don't endorse anyone. I hate everyone. But I like the Phils. They know football. All right, guys, my name is Stephen Michaels from the Raiders Daily. That is Philip Robinson. We will see you guys later. Take care.